New episode, new sponsor. Ooh. We're talking Casper.com. This one's exciting. Casper the Friendly Mattress. I like that. Yeah? So Casper is an online retailer of premium mat- mattresses for a fraction of the price. They sent us a mattress. They said, we want you guys to try it out. They fucking right. sent us a queen-size mattress. They did. It arrived in a box. It looked like a mini fridge. Yeah, a mini fridge size box. And we're like, this is not an actual queen size mattress. That doesn't make sense. We open the box and a, a mattress just begins to like bloom in front of our it eyes. It came to life. Yeah, it came to life. We left it in the living room because we find it more comfortable than anything else now. You slept in it. You slept on it. I didn't in sleep the in the living. cabin last yeah, night. Yeah, you slept, slept, on, slept on the Casper on mattress. Casper mattress. It's that comfortable. It is really great. And it sounds. It almost sounds like old school to be like, this This episode's brought to you by a mattress. Right. But they're sort of, kind of like in the way of other of our other sponsors, they're finding like ways to like revolutionize and doing interesting just things. Like, yeah, just make things super convenient. Yeah. Because nice. like buying mattresses is insanely difficult. Like, you have, you to, have go to, to, to go to a store, and there's, like, 80 options. A mattress store. Yeah. That's which the is, weirdest thing. <laughs> it's bad. And people have slept on those beds. It's a huge showroom filled with mattresses. Casper just, they basically created what they consider to be the most comfortable bed uh, that you can have. And you, there's no other options. You go there, and you just tell them what size you have. The costs start at $500 for a twin-size mattress, $600 for a twin XL, $750 for a full, $850 for a queen, and $950 for a king, which is pretty on the low end for mattresses yeah, that mattresses are great. Yeah, mattresses usually cost over $1,000, like a right. decent one. Yeah, especially a big one. So if you are in the market for a mattress, this is actually a, a, a cool coincidence because they are not only uh, offering their low, low mattresses basically on their website to anyone who wants. But if you go to casper.com slash if I were you and use our coupon code if I were you, it's $50 off. And they just mail you a mattress. Yeah, you they don't have to worry about picking it up. Yeah, That's yeah. the worst thing. Yeah. Driving a car, tying it to the top of your of your car. At yeah. The, mattress the delivery is very, and very... And it's a, it's a hybrid mattress that combines premium latex foam with memory foam. So, Did you know that? No, I actually didn't know that. I just know that it feels good. It does feel I don't good. have to know the science of this shit. Actually, you do have to know that for when <clears throat> you say it. Do you? The... Yeah, you oh, have okay. to know that because we had to say it. Oh, I see. So say now that it. now you guys know. All right. Yeah. Uh, so please, uh, whether you have a shitty old mattress that you're looking to get rid of or you're in the process of moving and you want to just get rid of a mattress and get a new mattress... Check out Casper.com. It's a cool, it's at the very least an interesting, cool business idea. Yeah, you can go to the website and watch the videos and yeah. see the mattresses, how they look. Uh, They're cool. So check them out. It's Casper.com slash if I were you and use our coupon code if I were you. That's it. Awesomely comfortable, uh, affordable mattress. Casper.com. Uh, this was a fun episode. Things not only got real, but they ended up becoming, um, oh no, sorry. I just wanted to say that they got real. They didn't oh. get anything else. They were you guys, honest? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were honest, too. All you guys are going to love it. <laughs> All things considered, you guys will really like it. Enjoy. If I were you in a sticky situation, Jake and Amir, put your ass on blast. Now don't go making a fuss, cause this shit's hosted by us. You're listening to the one and only Advice Podcast. Welcome to the podcast show, Jake and Amir will make you go, oh, oh. If you're feeling hashtag go, oh, take a break and let them make you go, oh, oh. Mm. What genre of music was that? Bond, James Bond. Oh, yeah. So it was like cool electric guitar. Right. Yeah, Got it's it. like... Dan, 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 and then just like, it would be me in a tuxedo walking around. That and sounds nice. you're in your underwear eating cottage cheese out of the container behind what me. What Bond movie is that? <laughs> it's, uh, you're, you play like this very, you play like Bond's lazy roommate slash cousin. What's his name? Gary Bond. Also, are they related? Yeah, they're cousins. <laughs> oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> Cousin slash roommate. So. Got it. James and Gary. Gary Bond. That was written by a guy named Amir. Can you imagine that? An a Amir guy. so talented he can make that song. It's crazy. Uh, but it's Amir with an E. 
Ah, that explains it. Yeah. <laughs> if only his parents had a different name for him, he wouldn't have been able to do that. So thank you, Amir Iqbal, for making that cool uh, theme song for us. We, I wanted to you to, we were just about, we were talking right before we recorded, and I said, oh, this would be an interesting conversation for the podcast. Uh, you, <laughs> you walked into my room where we were recording, and as a joke, I hid behind the door and I yelled, boo, at you. <laughs> And you almost dropped your phone. No, that was the I. I wasn't even afraid. Uh, the, yeah. Don't misrepresent me. <laughs> but you did. Dro- you were on your phone. I was on my phone, yeah. and I like <laughs> made a joke about if I was afraid, and yeah. I dropped. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the question is, if I yelled "boo" and you dropped your phone, your new phone, and it cracked right. and it broke, I, is it my fault, or do I owe you cash? I really for think. It? Yeah, I think it's a discussion. <laughs> Because it's really interesting. Because it's not like you drop my phone. Because then no. it's like, of course, I'll pay for you. I'll give you yeah. money. I didn't hit it out of your hands. Right. So Physically. I, it really could be a stalemate. <laughs> but I did. But I did force you to drop it. Right. But like, like it is even... on, it's on me that I dropped it. All right. But I was like afraid and yeah. I reacted in a way that broke my phone. Right. Like what if I didn't try to scare you? What if you were just accidentally scared by me and that caused you to drop your phone? Am right. I still responsible? Yeah. But you, if I think this is what would happen if I did it to you, I would get you a new phone. And if you did it to me, I would get myself a new phone. <laughs> so either way you're getting a phone. Also, if you did it to me, I would sue. <laughs> Even if you have you sued me, me a lot. Yeah. I think there's I've several sued you. pending <laughs> Lawsuits. Class action lawsuits <laughs> against you. That's a lawsuit. The California, the state of California versus Jay Kerwitz. <laughs> That's me. That's my nickname in court. I call myself the state of California, baby. Uh, so this is if I were you, the only advice podcast on the whole internet, hosted by us. I'm Amir. I'm Jake. Um, and this. What do I say now? Do I describe the show, or do we like? do other stuff usually we tickle each other for a bit <laughs> this is i have amnesia and you're teaching me how to be me again and then what do i say and then you and then you uh tweet a picture of your penis and you give me money oh that's yeah right so, now during the show i do that every single episode why do you want why do you want me to shame myself before i give you cash <laughs> i think it'll be silly <laughs> would i get kicked off twitter for that i think you're allowed to post pictures of your penis on twitter yeah I think you're allowed to post tweets. Because <laughs> it's it, it. Can you? Uh, I don't know. I've definitely seen them on there. No, I bet you can't because then there would be a lot more. Like if you're a, a porn star or a, a nude model on Twitter, wouldn't like wouldn't a lot of people just post their photos on Twitter? Nudes? Yeah, porn stars post nude photos on Twitter. But not on Instagram? You're not allowed to on Instagram. So you're not allowed to on Instagram, but you are on Twitter? I don't know what... Maybe they're just more... It seems like it never wouldn't ever be encouraged. I don't know. But this maybe is, this is why we're losing to China. I swear, dude. Because they let people post on everything, nude things. Yeah, everywhere on, on Alibaba. China. You can yeah. go on Alibaba. That's why I bought that Alibaba yeah, stock. Yeah, because <laughs> you just you you only invest in things tangentially related to tits. I've got one stock. Yeah, there. yeah. And you have oh, you have bond. one share. I have a bond. You have there. a single share of Alibaba and one bond, U.S. Treasury bond, <laughs> a T bill, a uh-huh. five year and then T-bill. stamps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I'll do is I'll... They'll never depreciate. Of course they will. What? That's the stupidest thing. They never depreciate. Yeah. Yeah, 33 cent stamp. Yeah. It'll, those, that money will be worth less in five years. Right, but the stamp will yeah. always be worth the same. <laughs> right. That's but the value of the stamp will go down. Well, sure. Sure. Of so why, why even buy the stamps? Just, uh, I you, by the way, you have so many stamps <laughs> in your room. Uh, real, real quick before we get into the show... Doesn't this seem like an article you would see on like the front page of like a, a fluff news st- like site like Yahoo News or maybe BuzzFeed? It's like guy sends a hundred envelopes with stickers instead of stamps. Oh. Click here to see how many like got returned to him. That's interesting. So you just buy stickers. You don't even buy because a stamp is basically just a sticker that says something on it. Right. So like, what if I just put I uh, put uh, on like an it envelope? Have to scan anything? I don't think so. I think I could just put like a little dinosaur stamp on an envelope and give it to the like. Is a post off postman really going to be like so busy like making sure this one letter doesn't go through? I don't know. That's just a little life hack for you guys. It'd be fun to try. Buy buy stickers. 
people's rent checks are just lost in the mail forever. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by stickers.com. The only way to send stickers online. Uh, so how does this show work? People are in need of our advice. So they'll email us if, at if I were you show at gmail.com. We read through these emails and we answer a few of them on the show. We dispense our advice on the podcast. Thoughts? That was actually really nice. It wasn't like as brief as it could have been. No, but it, but was, it, did it was conversational in tone. It explained the story. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have your own questions, you can send them to if I were you show at gmail.com. Uh, as for now, let's fucking get this party really started. Um, Thank you. These are real emails from real people, but we're going to need to give them fake names to preserve their anonymity. Okay. Um, what are you thinking? Um, well, why don't we do people from the football game we were just watching? Oh, that's, it's going to really show how, how last minute we recorded this show. But I yeah. guess that's kind of cool. True. It's like you're listening to this, and we, we, we spoke it seven hours before yeah, it went this online. is like borderline live. Yeah, this is as close as it can get. Except for when we have a live show. For instance, in Austin. For instance, in Houston. <laughs> January 24th and January 25th. At Aston at the North Door and at Houston as part of the Come and Take It Comedy Festival. Um, all right. First question comes from somebody we'll call Marshawn Lynch. Very nice. Beast Mode writes, Hey, guys. Love the show and super excited to hopefully see you all live in Austin. Oh, at the North Door. That's right. I have a dilemma, though. I've been dating my girlfriend for around nine months, and everything is going well except for one thing. I don't like her friends. They are obnoxious and aren't intelligent academically or socially. I've tried giving them a chance, but they just grind my gears. I can't understand how she continues to be friends with them. My question is this. Should I say anything to my girlfriend about how I don't like them, or should I just remain quiet and bend over and take it? Also, any other ideas you have would be helpful. Thanks for your help. Love, Marshawn Lynch. (laughs) <laughs> Marshawn Lynch uh, it's, I've never dated someone whose friends I hate all of them because that, doesn't that just mean that that person is bad Yeah. what are the odds there's one cool lady in a group of so many terrible people I think if you yeah if you hate like 10 people yeah then you're then you're hateable <laughs> you're the bad too. you're the bad yeah um, but also like what are you talking about yeah, I'm gonna tell like they're not your friends. Yeah, well, she, should he like, say anything to her? Like he's gonna break her the news. Hey, I'm sorry to tell you this, honey, but I friends. Your friends are bad. You're, they're bad, so don't be friends with them. <laughs> and then I'll have my friends and you, and you'll have me and no one. And I think that's good. All right, good talk. Slaps her ass. <laughs> she giggles. Hey, you're gonna stop seeing your friends. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, they're not intelligent socially. <laughs> oh, or and what? that really grinds my gears. You know that. <laughs> or academically. The way they're not intelligent <laughs> academically or socially. Yeah, I look. What does it mean to be socially intelligent? Like, uh, you know, like being able to hang out in a group setting and not like out yourself as a weirdo. Uh-huh. Like if you're like a cool person that gets along with everyone, you have great social intelligence. I see. Yeah. Okay. So like I'm like in the middle. Like I can't, if I'm not having a good time, I show that on my face. Right. But then like, you know, some of those people are like, oh, this is such a good guy. He can hang out with anyone. He's so fun and friendly. Yeah. Very easy. Yeah. Guy. Yeah. Like who's an example of someone like that in your life? George Basil. Yeah, he's like sort of just a happy chameleon. Uh huh. So you put him in a group of like sports fans, he can like get into it, uh, be interested. You put him in a group of like movie nerds, music nerds, he's socially adaptable, very socially intelligent. Yeah. And then, uh, so who's exam- an example of someone that you hate? Like someone that you think secretly you've been uh, feeling or harboring ill will towards that they don't know, but ideally they listen to the program. So like this is your. Right. Like I would say John Wolfe. Really? Yeah. So yeah. John Wolf at our office. That's funny because that would have been that's yeah, mine too. I know. I, you, yeah. I saw what you right. when I said. Well, we, you said which person I, you, you said hate. Yeah. John. I said yeah. I mouthed Wolf, Wolf at the yeah. same time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You started howling, and then yeah. we knew. Ow! Yeah. <laughs> so he's an he's a complete idiot. Right. He's a moron. Well, he's not just a moron. I think if a moron lets him off the hook too. Much. <laughs> yeah. Because I think he makes decisions to be bad. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think. Oh, so a moron is sort of blissfully ignorant, and we're yeah, talking about. I think about, a moron can be happy. Yeah. He's, 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 he's a, a misanthrope on purpose. He's, you know, I've actually seen him um, rob rob charities how so he <laughs> that's actually his nickname <laughs> rob chair <laughs> hey i'm rob oh. rob charities oh that sounds nice but now that i think about it rob charity <laughs> you rob charities 
<laughs> no, um, at McDonald's, John Wolf um will just like take the ronald mcdonald phone. oh out of the yeah. the coins he'll put it like he'll put um a little piece of gum on, oh. on a toothpick you know what he does he has... get coins out <laughs> he also has dummy dimes yep so like those things at the supermarket where you have to like it's the march of dimes you put in dimes yeah he'll spend thousands of dollars making dummy dimes du- it's crazy so he, it, they they think it's filled up so nobody else can donate and then right. they go to cash it in yeah and it says like it, it is a picture of FDR. He gets it engraved. But on the back, it says, you've been had. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen him at a bar 100% on purpose because he'll do this regularly. <laughs> sure. Um, as soon as somebody, like, he knows someone's carrying drinks back to, like, a table of friends. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, a friendly person just bought their friends around a Around, shop, yeah. You know? He'll back up. Like, <laughs> look at them. And then back up really swiftly. So they'll drop all the drinks. Oh, so all they have the a floor. tray of, like... And then he'll say, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um let me get you let me get you another round and then what does he do and then he's like you guys are sitting over there i'll bring it over to the table and then yeah. he'll just never he'll leave the bar oh so my like God. they'll drop all the drinks on the ground and then lose their spot at the bar and then not get drinks you know what else i saw him do what uh when i went to uh, when i went to college a lot of times people would do hunger strikes oh yeah so like if like somebody was so like uh socially outraged at something he would sit on campus and he wouldn't eat right right so wolf walked by one of these guys and he he had these empty wrappers of fun size Snickers, uh-huh. and he would like toss them next to him. Wow! And then he'd call the like a police or a newspaper source and be like, "What is Try that? To out this yeah, guy. what is that? You you ate that just fun like, size to Snickers? undermine his yeah. uh, undermine his um right. his point of view exactly yeah, for so sure. Like, you, you've been eating snacks. Wow! And then he's like, "No, I haven't." Like, well, look at all these things, and he'll smear a little chocolate on the guy's face it's or on his on the side of his lip. Absurd. Yeah, absurd I, that he would do that. <laughs> so. So basil on one end, and then wolf. You know, I've also seen wolf. <laughs> oh yeah. You know what? Um, he will sometimes <laughs> just go to like a little league uh, football or baseball game. He does, he's You've seen no both. single person there. Yeah, you've seen both. Both. He'll just sit on the bleachers, wait for a car to like pull up, <laughs> like a dad late for his kid's game. Oh yeah. And he'll run to the car and he'll say. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It happened in the second inning. What happened? Your son, uh, we had to take him to the hospital. <laughs> and, oh, uh, and he'll get in the car with the dad. <laughs> oh, they'll drive to the, the hospital, hospital together. Holy shit. Yeah. And then once they get there, John Wolf will just, he'll, he'll, <laughs> he'll open he'll, the door. He'll rob the yeah. dad. <laughs> <laughs> Why does he take him to the hospital? It's crazy. He he, like, actually, he wants the dad to be panicked and like thinking about other shit. Well, that's that makes a lot of sense because he told me that one time he actually set up a dummy infirmary that he took the dad. He's to. into dummy shit. Yeah, he's into. Yeah. He has a lot of dummy, <laughs> like dummy times <laughs> yeah. in a dummy infirmary. Yeah, so he set up this whole <laughs> fake set, and he had a doctor and a nurse, and he even like an entire like EKG monitor, and he even hired a dummy chi- a dummy child. Right. A deaf, dime, and a dumb and blind, blind yeah, and kid. And the kid just lied down. He put a blanket over everything yeah. except for the feet, and he wheeled it past the window. <laughs> and the, like the parents were just like floored. For, yeah, they were freaked. flipping out. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you get? What do you get from this? Do you get cash? And he says, sometimes I do. Sometimes I rob charities. Yeah. <laughs> and then sometimes a lot of it is just me being a, a public nuisance, a dickling, and a chaos creator. Yeah. And then I'll howl at the moon and yeah. he'll say, I am John Wolf. <laughs> How is he still around? How is he still alive? How is he not in jail? It's crazy. Because technically, none of the things he's doing is illegal. That's well. That's like another thing dummy dimes are off. dummy yeah, dimes are yeah. fake counterfeit money. money. Yeah, of course that's. <laughs> but he's not spending it. He's also, donating. robbing people. Yeah, he said. He said that. <laughs> he did. That that's true. Illegal. And the emotional trauma caused by telling someone right, that you they're can get children. sued for that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, what should this guy tell his girlfriend? Oh, I forgot that that's even happening. Just you don't have to hang out with them. You're they're not your friends. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, next question. All right. One time I saw John Wolf <laughs> shove a bystander, an innocent bystander. <laughs> question number two comes from a lady. Who? What football player has the most feminine name? Hmm. Is Fle- is Fleener's full name is full name uh Fleener's first name Casey? I think it's Kobe. Oh, that's pretty. Kobe Fleener? Yeah. That could be a girl's name. All right. Kobe Fleener writes, "Hey guys, love you and love the show. I was hoping you'd be able to give me some peace of mind. I recently got back together with an ex. 
Maybe a good idea, maybe a bad one, but I digress. We've been back together for a month and a half, and I feel like things are going really well. We've even decided to be exclusive again and be boyfriend and girlfriend. Here's where things get sticky. I've noticed that my boyfriend has both OkCupid and Tinder on his phone. This isn't exactly strange since we originally met through Tinder. The problem is I find it weird he still has both apps on his phone even after we've decided to be exclusive. And no, I didn't find it through snooping. He was showing me a picture and I saw the apps. I didn't say anything and he didn't either. Am I being too sensitive? He's a friendly person, but if he's trying to make friends, I feel like it isn't through a dating app. Please help. I really love this guy and I don't want, to th- I don't want him to think that I'm being suspicious. Thanks, guys. Much love. Cody or K- Kobe Fleener? Um, I just want to say, on the hottest day of the summer this year, yeah. John Wolf went to a crowded pool <laughs> and pooped in it. What did he do? He, he shit in the oh, pool. So that everyone, everyone had, had to, to get out. Everyone uh, was peaceful, uh, cooling down. <laughs> yeah. And he shit in the pool. He actually passed the buck onto he a said, like 75-year-old uh, oh, lady, oh, lap swimmer. An old lady. And she, uh, was, she was banned from, from the, the pool, pool for the rest of the summer. <laughs> yeah. She eventually died because she wasn't getting any exercise. She became diabetic and died. Well, that's the crazy thing. And then they suspected Wolf, and they tested the feces, and it was hers. He must have... He tampered he with the fucking, evidence. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Or, or he got the shit, and he like literally dumped like it. Like he yeah, took it from like her he toilet. he took it from her toilet, it's I fucking think. Sick. He's so conniving. Yeah. It's He's, like... And it's like all he does all day <laughs> yeah. is a scheme yeah. and plot. <laughs> yeah. He's diabolical. Yeah. He's diabolical. That's yeah, what he yeah, is. Yeah, it's what it is. It's exactly right. He's like the he's the joker. He's a villain. Yeah. He's, he's a villain. villainous. He's a social villain for yeah. sure. Uh so this girl this guy still has Tinder. How long have they been back together? A month and a half. Oh yeah, no, that's bad. I love that this girl is so sweet. She's like, I don't know, maybe he's just using him to make friends. Oh, Honey. No one, honey, no one makes friends on Tinder. <laughs> no. We don't make friends. No, you never make friends, even in life, let alone on OkCupid. Okay right, yeah, no, I'm not here to make friends, you yeah. know what I'm saying? You know what he probably, well, okay, well, there's two layers. There's one that he's actively using it, which is really bad, and then there's one where he keeps it on in the background, because like, he's like, I'm going to break up soon, I might as well like keep getting those swipes in, so that right. when I'm done, I got this pool of reservoir. But then there's also, I mean, personally, this would never happen to me. Of course. Because I am, I, I keep my phone clean, you know? But yeah. you, like, you'll meet people that have just like pages and pages of apps. apps. Yeah. So I would say, let's go on the pages. If he's got three pages or less of apps, break up with him. Oh. So if but he- if he's got like four pages or more, then I think he just maybe didn't delete it yet. Oh, what if she just checks? Can't she see how often he uses it when he was last logged in? Well, I think if you log in, it'll say last logged in just now. Right. But what if you're on OkCupid and you check some, like from somebody else's OkCupid profile, you search for him and then it says the last time he logged in. Or you could also just log into his Tinder and see um, how many, like how recently he's had a match. Oh, that's good. Or you can delete Tinder and see if he questions you about it. I think I would ask him about it. That's probably the... The most, the best direct way to do it is like, hey, I got to talk to you about something. It's in my head. I want this. Like, if we're gonna give this relationship another shot, which we are, I guess. Yeah. Um, let's put everything on the table. Right. Why you still got Tinder? Why you still got OK <laughs> Cupid? And then see what he does with that. Yeah. If he if he acts like super caught, he'll he'll get really red faced really quickly. Right. I mean, Wolf did the same thing. He was somebody's best man at the you wedding. Know, dude, I've seen Wolf. He just downloaded like, Tinder on his phone. I'm, yeah. Uh, yep. On a fia- on on the bride and the groom's phone. Right. And swiped for a while too. <laughs> they keep... even like had some matches. It was it was damning to right. be sure. And then they both find out about the other one. And that's not the first time he's done that. Is the <laughs> fucking crazy thing? He downloaded Tinder on his mother's phone. Oh my god. Told gosh. his father about it. Oh my. Gosh. If you can imagine. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I I can only imagine because we're talking about the same guy. Yeah. Yeah. This vigilante. This this, this social vigilante. This werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> this man, this coward man, <laughs> this yellow man. Uh, so you say chicken man, yeah, it's chicken human. So you're saying to uh, confront him about it? Yeah, I that's I say confront him about it. Uh, but also, I stand by my. Um, if he's got a lot of apps and it seems like he's not like just you know doesn't really do a lot of maintenance on his phone then maybe it's not a big deal at all and you shouldn't even like 
I think Tinder is a bigger deal than OkCupid. Yeah, I mean, okay, yeah. Okay, keep it, you just sort of keep it running in the background of your life. Tinder, you got to really be actively swiping. That's true. And I mean, like, I feel like you're pretty aware when you have Tinder. It's one of those apps that's just like at the forefront of your mind when you unlock your phone. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Do you think it's a necessary thing if you're in a relationship to delete those apps? Uh, Yeah. Well, I mean, what's the point of having them? Exactly. Yeah. It's only temptation. Right. I mean, I think it's, yes, of course. It's like a sign of disrespect to the person. Tinder is basically saying I'm still on the market. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's an app that uh, broadcasts that you're a single available person. That's a wolf move to be sure. Oh, yeah. Classic wolf. Actually, there's another question about temptation. I think, I think, I think. I hope. Um, oh, no. But I, we do have one more about um, about marriage. Good. That's what made me think of it. Um, it's another female. It's another f- a feminine um, a name. Russell Wilson? Oh, uh, no. I would say that's an objectively male name. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. What about uh, Cody Parkey? Yeah. He's the kicker for the Eagles. His name is Cody, and his last name is Parkey. What about Mark Sanchez? That's also very exclusively Masculine? male. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay or you apologize or that's a stupid thing you said <laughs> you're not apologizing or saying you're not showing you, your so you want me to say sorry and say okay <laughs> yeah that's actually just a masculine male hmm. all right <laughs> all right or you apologize for yeah, what you yeah, yeah 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 no, yeah yeah what yeah yeah okay all right sure jesus christ i'm sorry Someone who I considered, sorry, Cody Parkey writes, someone who I considered a very good friend just got married. They had a multi-year engagement, and during that time, we have discussed her wedding and attended the wedding of other friends together. I assume that since we've been friends for over 10 years, that I would be invited. Wrong. I was on Facebook chat and received a message of her double-checking my address so she could send me her wedding announcement. I was psyched until I realized that an announcement isn't the same as an invitation. I know that times are tight and that weddings are expensive. I have just always considered her someone that would be invited to my own wedding, so it stings to be snubbed. I'm in the later half of my 20s, so I want to be an adult about this. Should I send a gift when I receive the announcement? Should I confront her and say how much it hurt not being invited? Has this ever happened to either of you? What would you do? Love, Cody Parkey. Mm. So she's getting an. Is that a? Th- I didn't even know that. Neither I've never gotten I. a wedding announcement. That's strange. Is there a chance that she's wrong and she is invited? I feel like it. I feel like there is. Can I have your? Can I have your address? I want uh, to send you a letter that says I'm getting married, and that's that. I don't think that. Wait, look it up. What can wedding we, announcement? Yeah, that seems weird. Uh, wedding announcement versus invitation. Yeah. That I've never I've I've never, like heard of save the dates, but that's also a precursor to the invitation yeah. versus wedding announcement versus invitation. Uh, let's just assume for a minute that she's right. Oh, wedding invitation etiquette, announcements versus invitations. Those are two different things. You order a wedding announcement cards at the same time you order your wedding invitation cards to save on expenses, but you do not send out the wedding announcements until after the wedding has taken place. Oh, like the wedding already happened. So she is. She says, I want to send you a letter that says I got married. Like that, the wedding happened, and let me send you something that says I got married. That's so, that's yeah. That's an insane dick move. Why would... I, <laughs> But here, like, why would you have? It, I, it seems like there wouldn't be two camps. Like, I'll invite these people to the wedding, and other everyone else, I'll just tell. Yeah, it's like instead of Facebook, it's like an announcement. By the way, I got married. Well, but why would you just? I feel like if there's somebody that I'm close enough that I want to tell that I'm getting married, I would invite them to the wedding. Really? So everybody that you'd want to tell, you would invite? That's not true. Anyway, yeah, anyone I would want to tell, like in a sort of fancy way like that (laughs) if i ever get married i would like (laughs) post it online or something it's just and then i wouldn't uh mail everyone who wasn't invited a letter (laughs) saying the party was dope (laughs) we're married we're so happy and y'all weren't invited nor missed (laughs) i can't stress enough that everyone who we wanted to be there was there 
and we weren't wanting for anyone. No, we had we we didn't miss a single soul. I also, but like also, weddings are it's so weird because it's it's like that's somebody else's thing. Yeah, just like you I know. Can't. It's it's so small that you would feel slighted. It's I understand that you do, but it's like this is your world where you were invited to a party, but this your friend is getting married. That's right. insane. It's such a huge undertaking. And, and this you're gonna, one tiny little thing. You're, you're going to make like, her feel bad. Yeah. Which she should be, but maybe not right now. Right. So I think we should say, don't send a gift. Sure. But also, Especially if you're mad. Yeah. You don't have to send a gift if you weren't invited. Uh, giving someone a gift is like, thanks for paying for my fancy dinner that night. Right. You paid $180 for me to be there. So I'm going to give you a gift that's so, that hopefully reimburses you for a certain percentage of the cost. Exactly. So no No present. gift, but also no anger. No confrontation. Oh, yeah. You can still be angry. You just shouldn't bring it up. Right. Bottle it up. And maybe you don't have to invite her to your wedding now. Oh, that's good. You just saved some money. There we go. You know Wolf sent out that wedding announcement for the couple that had just broken up. Uh Uh-huh, yeah. The guy, like, got caught cheating on his girlfriend. He'll often do things like that. Right, and so he'll he'll just investigate, do a little, like, completely private eye, like, unpaid snooping, really. Yeah. And he'll find out a couple that just broke up in a very public, embarrassing, shameful way. And And then he'll he'll send out a And he'll Photoshop... Uh, wedding announcements and he'll find out who their friends are dark attitude so much (laughs) so much so much effort to send out a wedding announcement so that then as they're going through this horrible emotionally destructive thing they're also fielding calls and emails of saying congratulations like they probably want space but in this time they have to be together to deal with this crisis exactly and they cannot this pr nightmare (laughs) pr nightmare bullshit that he is just like, and he's like a master puppeteer, and he doesn't see, he doesn't get off at to seeing it because he's never even there. Like he doesn't know this couple, right? He's not experiencing the fallout. He's often busy planning his exactly. his, his next, next con, scene, his yeah. next con, his long con, yeah. short con. It doesn't matter. He doesn't even see it. He just likes in the back of his head, knowing that he cre- he's an agent of chaos. Right. He created this. He'll chaos. start a forest fire and walk away. His back turned the entire time. Right. Never exactly. even turning to look. Nor does he check the news. Feel the to warmth, see if it works. you know yeah mm-hmm. yeah no that, just, th- that doesn't get him off right what gets him off is just knowing in the back of his head that people are scrambling that he's disrupting yeah the yeah, status, the status quo. quo things yeah. are different because of him and always for the worse because <laughs> he's hungry like john wolf <laughs> uh let's take a break and then come back and answer one last email Let's stick with the football theme and say thank you once again to DraftKings.com. You know, millionaires are being made all season long at DraftKings.com, America's favorite one-week fantasy football site. One week of fantasy means no season-long commitments. You can play whenever you want. Got a player who's hurt? No problem. It's like a new season every week, so you're never stuck with the same players. Have you ever done a full season of fantasy football? It's crazy. It's a lot of effort. And I'm a football fan. Yeah. And I don't you're a mind. casual fan. I'm a, I love football. Yeah. But I only, actually <laughs> breathe it. If football was on a day where you weren't hungover all day, would you watch it as much? N- I might rather go outside yeah, for sure, but since since it's so convenient to enjoy watching football on Sunday, why not make some money off of it? One listener turned ten bucks into five thousand, another turned two dollars into ten grand, and new millionaire has been crowned nearly every week this season at DraftKings dot com. You could be next. I will be next. No, no, no. I was just saying the general you. Oh, uh, not I'm necessarily. Sorry. I got so <laughs> amped. Jesus, I was excited. <laughs> I wanted to be the the cash king. So head to DraftKings.com now and use promo code Jake. Yes. To play free in the ten million dollar fantasy football world championships. DraftKings.com. Bigger events, bigger winnings, bigger millionaires. Enter Jake now at DraftKings.com. That's DraftKings. Dot com. Nice. Thank you. All right, we're back. Uh, We mentioned we have the shows January 23rd. No, January 24th in in, 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 in Austin. In Austin. January 25th in Houston. A Texas two-step. For sure. Uh, Anything else we should mention on this program? Mm. Oh, didn't you want to mention that you can watch Peter Pan on NBC? Oh, yeah, because we were assholes and we didn't... uh talk about it yeah Yeah. allison's like so good to us by coming on our podcast (laughs) and we pair back by doing nothing ever 
Yeah, it so, sounded like they got a lot of viewers anyway. Yeah, they did, they actually ended up getting millions of viewers without right. our help. For whatever reason, the, the whole thing went off without a hitch, yeah. even though me and Amir didn't promote it. It was able to be viral even without our tweets. <laughs> uh, but you could, if you did miss Peter Pan Live, uh, Allison Williams, who's been on this show before, was on it and played Peter Pan. <laughs> yeah, she was actually very down- she was the titular role. Yeah, uh, our friend Allison was in it. She oh, was yeah. in that one. <laughs> Who the- was she? She, she played, played one of the boys, the Lost Boys, mm-hmm. the, the main one, one with the Pan. Green. Yeah, yeah, Peter Pan. <laughs> yeah, the green one. The, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, the one that like doesn't grow. I don't know. Right. Well, this the play is named after that Her. character. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so weird. Uh-huh. That's a funny little coincidence. Right. So she plays that one, and uh, you can watch it on NBC.com. You said. I think it's on NBC.com. Yeah. So there's still time to watch and support uh, Allison Williams. It's never and too late. We're sorry we didn't say anything before the show. We were so high last week. I know, dude. Yeah, I we was honestly baked. smoked a joint. <laughs> yeah, and then we each ate a we, little a, a pot, an edible. A, yeah, an edible a coffee pot bean. Edible. Yeah, it was a little espresso <laughs> we, bean. We went Dutch on an espresso bean. Uh-huh. We ate it, uh, Lady in the Tramp style, right. with our teeth so close together that we eventually nearly kissed, but definitely Frenched. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely our lips didn't touch but, <laughs> but our, our tongues, tongues did. did yeah uh-huh. we were we were tongue licking each other <laughs> to be sure um what was i gonna say oh yeah the laced treats actually reminds me of the time that wolf set up that bake sale <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah of course he didn't even don't well. he didn't even donate it yeah he just he literally started a bake sale yep and urged so many people to bring stuff and bake stuff for it and he replaced all the treats, so he would throw away the fresh, the fresh brownies and cookies, oh. and replace it with his laced food. That's interesting. I, dude, I just, I just realized. Um, I was thinking of a different bake sale scheme that he did. Oh, really? Where he, he actually made an amazing. Uh, it was, it was an amazing dish. Um, <laughs> uh, just like a ton, tons of sweet treats, delicious food, uh, and all the signs just said. It's for a good cause. It's for a good cause. Uh-huh. So people really supported the supported it. He raised, uh, you know, over a thousand dollars, but then he he ended up <laughs> donating the money to the KKK. <laughs> Oh, so he did he a part, yeah he took an ad out in the newspaper to say like <laughs> and then like you know there are pictures of people supporting giving money <laughs> oh the money so it's like to the he KK- defamed yeah. characters right in his exactly. in his local community so like these are the people that went to the kkk bake sale <laughs> oh just like such a such a dick dick dickling move it really is that actually it's so weird you bring that one up because then it jogs to my mind yet a third bake, bake sale, sale. <laughs> oh, uh, scheme he was on that tip yeah. for a bit he, really <laughs> he went was. through like a phase or something mm-hmm. he heard about a bake sale like a neighborhood bake sale to raise money or right. awareness or something for like a they wanted to turn like a firehouse into a public space yep so they were raising money to like say make enough rent to save the firehouse that's really nice that sounds and like he, a good cause this one is super subtle it's like almost nothing but he <laughs> <laughs> that's he, almost what makes it yeah he sh- everyone's selling these baked goods and he showed up, <laughs> he showed up with 10 pizzas and well, just I to, like guess, undermine. Not, <laughs> I don't think to undermine. I think more like he wanted the person in charge to have to tell him that they couldn't sell pizza because it was like a bake sale. So like it was such a small thing that he like wanted to put this just, the, the organizer the, the, in a just weird. Like, yeah, just make them a little uncomfortable. Yeah, exactly. Because he, you feel bad. He spent yeah. a lot of money on the pizzas, which he did. Uh-huh. And then, but like you can't just sell pizza right. slices at. And a actually, bake sale. I did. I heard about this. Maybe not from you, but an, but another one of our mutual friends. Because when he was told, eventually, you know, the person was very kind. They said, like, you know, we can't um, selling this. <laughs> he. He walked. He threw them all out in a trash can in like oh, a in a big display, like in a huff. and then like angrily stood around, brooding uh, <laughs> nearby leave, the bake sale. He didn't leave the scene. No, he didn't just go home. He like he like, and this is the even the craziest part. He brooded for like maybe an hour. Oh gosh! Then he stormed off in a huff. Everybody felt relieved. <laughs> Twenty minutes later, he came back, and everyone With was what? like a little fearful that he came back to hurt someone. He had two pizzas, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, came back, he yeah. was wondering. He's like, he came back with a calzone. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> said maybe this will do, and they felt too bad to like tell him to turn around. <laughs> but the calzone was laced. It was laced, <laughs> and it ended up being laced with like visine. <laughs> the wolf lives. Uh, let's get to the last question. One of my faves. 
Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Uh, we need one last. Um, oh, wow, another lady. We really shouldn't have chosen a football, <laughs> football game. Football game. Yeah. Uh, Jeez Louise. Uh, uh, um, Eli Manning. But, like, Eli is, like, a cool new But that's not a But that's name. not a player from the... From the game that we watched? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, hmm. Let's go with um, LaShawn McCoy. That's perfect. LaShonda McCoy. Right. Okay, I have a problem. I've been going out with this guy for maybe three months. It started off as just a sex thing, but now we seem to be pretty fond of each other. So we are both seniors in high school and have different hobbies. I enjoy photography and playing guitar, but on the other hand, he enjoys parkour and phones. He's very attractive and has an awesome sense of humor. The phone thing is weird. I can deal with that. But I've always had a problem with teenage boys doing parkour. The problem is that he's really bad and constantly wants me to film him. Uh, as <laughs> <laughs> Constantly wants me to film him. Then make me comment on what he can improve. When the fact is he's just simply stop jumping on rocks. So should I jump this... Should I dump this fuckboy and move on to greater, better things? Explain to him that I despise when he makes, he makes me film him, or just simply deal with it and like him for him. Thanks, LaShawn McCoy. Oh, my God. So she has two hobbies, photography and guitar. Which are both hobbies. Sure. And he has, he has two hobbies. Which, uh... Parkour. Which is a hobby. And phones. Which is not. <laughs> which is a noun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like i have a lot of hobbies i like jogging oh, and nice ties huh? yeah i do <laughs> i'm actually really into fishing and paper clips <laughs> yeah not really a hobby but wall <laughs> <laughs> yeah not a hobby what do you mean you're in, you, that your hobby is phones i bet it's not that you build them. really my my hobby is keys yeah so it's just things we keep in our pockets <laughs> yeah I guess everyone has a phone hobby, or at the very least, a phone in general. Yeah, he uses it a lot, so that's sort of a hobby. She doesn't mind the phone hobby. Honestly, it's actually kind of sexy. He has just a drawer full of old Samsung <laughs> Galaxies and Palm Pilots. But, unfortunately, when he's jumping around doing actually athletic shit, she can't stand it. It's funny that he's not good at parkour. Yeah. It's such a fun thing to be bad at. It is funny to imagine him like trying to do a flip off a wall, like six <laughs> old iPhones come out of his wallet. <laughs> Oh shit! My phones, <laughs> my two hobbies—they com- they conflict with each other because my phones weigh me down. Yeah, these crazers are sort of keeping my pants sagging down below my ankles. I have a backpack full of StarTex, <laughs> so I can't really do a good three sixty. <laughs> uh, making your girlfriend watch you, make you forcing her to uh, film you do parkour, and then making her comment on what he can do to improve. Yeah. No, you could definitely jump on this rock smoother um the way you jumped on the rock and jumped off it was um clumsy so sort of make it i mean we've gotten questions like this from the other side where it's like my girlfriend doesn't support my hobby which is kind of sad i know that's what i'm saying i think it's like bad as he is at parkour if you liked him you might find this kind of thing endearing yeah so maybe you could take it as a bad sign that you have no interest in supporting his hobby but then also like what if you were dating somebody who was like, yo, please come see my stand-up comedy, or please come like li- listen to my uh, band sing at open mic night. Right. And you went, and it was just like really objectively bad. What happens? What would you feel? Well, I don't know. I would feel bad. I would feel weird. Because I, I, I would have to lie to her. Right. And say, that was good. And then she's like, yeah, nobody else likes it. And like, yeah, they're all wrong. I'm right. It was good. <laughs> Are you just saying that? I'm not just saying that because I socially have to. Well, so yeah, maybe you just have to be okay with the fact that he's not good, but that he is working to improve. He's he will get better. He has it's to practice. I mean, you was, can't get worse. He's not going to be like maybe he's not going to be a professional parkour or yeah, but he'll get better. And he'll feel good about himself, and you'll feel good. So you should feel good about that. That being said, if you don't like filming it, just say, I don't want to film it, but I like that you do it, and I'll check out the videos from time to time. But um, we're not going to be a duo. Yeah, I'm not going to be your Spielberg and you my subject. Yeah, you have your own hobbies. He has his. He doesn't need to like drag you. You don't you know, buy phones with him on the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Supporting that hobby wholeheartedly. I just hope he doesn't get injured doing parkour at one of those parks that 
uh, Wolf has already gotten to. You know how he does the oh yeah, where he like, spritzes Vaseline, right? And uh, on he'll the edges. do <laughs> Vaseline, and uh, I've seen him like loosen a bar on the monkey bars right. and oh, it's always yeah, like yeah. the last one so there's sort of like one a lot of desperate yeah grab for the last one and then boom, yeah. yeah you fall and he's never again he's never there to see it nope he doesn't but he'll, want to see it the wood chips you know like those park with the wood chip floor yeah, yeah. seen him just spread tacks around on them oh or he like very subtly like makes subtle. them all point <laughs> a lot of what he does is subtle subtle yeah so he'll make make them all point in a specific way where it hurts when you walk on it yeah because usually wood chips are random and like uh, over the course of time they <laughs> yeah, he'll just soft go around and and, right sure yeah yeah so he'll, he'll turn them, them all up <laughs> and it's nearly impossible to id because he does it with the gloves he does it with gloves yeah so <laughs> <laughs> though i couldn't imagine a police officer <laughs> you know fingerprint. Uh, Greg, it's running a fingerprint again it's not test. a crime <laughs> yeah. technically nothing he's doing is illegal which is so ultimately fucked, fucked beyond fucked right uh so support his hobby get into phones get into parkour you don't have to film him uh, right. uh and if you can't get past it you shouldn't tell him to stop if anything, you should just stop being with him. Right. Just focus on other stuff. Also, I just wanted to mention one time, uh, John Wolfe, I heard he... Um, I think he, we're thinking of the same story. You like, do? Yeah. The old folks home one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is amazing. Where he, <laughs> he went up on an entire floor in an old folks home, told every single occupant in every single room that their grandchildren were there to see them and they would be right up. <laughs> oh, so yeah. they all like wheeled out into the hallway and they were so excited. Right. And he just, he just left. And I, I heard that story. And I was like, what, how did, sorry, they let him in this stranger in and they're like, no, no, no. John has been volunteering here for a year. So that's, it was such a long, 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 con. long con. Yeah. And a lot of it is subtle. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it is subtle. None of it is illegal. And it's, I don't know. That's it's, that's the wolf. He's a nuisance. <laughs> he is, but so much more so than that. Right. Because he's only noose. He's yeah. only a nuisance, and he's, he's nothing ever better. Right. He's a he's a public enemy. <laughs> I really think he is. Yeah. Uh, so that's it. That's our episode. Uh, thanks so much for listening, guys. If you have your own questions uh, or theme song submissions, please send it to if I were you show at gmail.com. We do read them all. We just can't respond to them all. The opening theme song was written by Amir Iqbal, and the last one is written, uh, it's a rap by a lady named Ellie. So Very that's cool. pretty exciting. Thank you. Uh, so thanks to everyone for listening. I think we're back on Thursday this week. Okay. So that's pretty chill. I eat, I eat. We'll see you soon. Want some advice from two great mates? Well, look no further than Amir and Jake. The rhymes are cool and the jokes are sick. The A great rappers and the impros quick. His name is Jay Wiss, known as the Pinch. Throw him a curveball and he don't flinch. He's an anti ex pro sex guy. If I saw him on Tinder, I'd be swiping right. The questions are dumb and sometimes crude, but Amir Lowell is a pretty chill dude. In a sticky situation, don't know what to do. I'd listen to them if I were you. Hello? Hi, it's me, Russ Matthews, America's gay. Listen, I get it. Life is hard. Okay, we all struggle. Boyfriend problems, girlfriend problems, job problems, life problems. Which TV show to watch? Honey, I get it. You need help. That's why I'm here. I'm the gay best friend you wish you had, and honey, you know you need. It's Straight Talk with me, Ross Matthews. This is tough love, honey, but it's worth it, like plucking or waxing. Get your weekly gay pep talk right here on podcastone.com.